Francis American National Catholic Church. Today we'll be beginning with Let Heaven Rejoice, which is number 333. In your hymnal, number 333, Let Heaven Rejoice. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. So welcome to our celebration for Mass on the seventh Sunday of Easter. Uh, as uh, some of you were coming in, you uh, thanked us for waiting for you. So I know it's been a little bit of a, uh, a task getting here this morning, but here you are. And in our scriptures this morning, uh, you will hear that your, uh, your journey here might represent your faithfulness uh, to the call of the gospel that we all uh, received in our baptism. As we do always, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings. Aware that this God who loves us brings us healing and forgiveness, and together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God, the Father, mercy through the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the Church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together with the angels and the archangels, let's raise our voices in that wonderful hymn of praise, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's Let us pray. God, our Father, glorify your Son in the lives of the people called by his name. Through no merit of ours, you have made us your own. To be your, a witness on earth, keep us true to the name we hear, that people everywhere may know that you are the God and lover of us all. We ask this through, our Christ, the re we ask this through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves prayer, to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I seek 
to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting in you. But let, no, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even a mischief maker. Yet, if one of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because of this name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave, me, that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, 
I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Brothers and sisters, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> By the words of the Holy Gospel, Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So happy Easter. This is the seventh week of Easter, and here we are. We are uh, in the post-ascension uh, week of Easter between now and Pentecost next week, where you and I will uh, anticipate the descent of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and with that, the sevenfold gift that comes to us anew uh, and refreshes us and renews us. Um, uh, last, I think it was, uh, last week, I wasn't here. I was uh, going to email people to see. I, I, I was going to say I missed you last week, but I realized it was me who wasn't here. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, 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 the week before I said Father Judy was preaching, I said he might be a little nervous because his parents are here. Well, I'm a little nervous today because my niece surprised me uh, from coming up, and so she's here at, at Mass with us as well. And I keep thinking that uh, God keeps surprising us, right, in, in many ways. Uh, God keeps surprising us in, uh, in wonderful uh, gifts of the Easter season. The readings that we have for today, this final uh, Sunday in Easter, uh, perhaps give us a little bit of hope and encouragement about how we understand and move in our faith today. The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, all through the Easter season, we don't have a reading from the Hebrew Scriptures. We have a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And during the week when we celebrate Mass, it is a kind of an unfolding of how the earlier followers of Christ began to understand uh, who he was to them in his absence. And so today we hear a little bit of uh, a, a, a sequel that followed from the, uh, from the Acts of the Apostles on Ascension. So Jesus says to his disciples uh, when he ascends into heaven to go back to Jerusalem and wait. And lo and behold, we hear that that's what they do. They go back to Jerusalem and they wait. And, uh, and they, uh, they, we hear in the Acts of the Apostles uh, the names of the 11 uh, apostles who are there and Mary, the mother of God, and the other women. And so we hear how they, be, uh, they occupy themselves with prayer. I guess, preparing for what is next for them. Uh, they're not quite sure, as it is for us sometimes. Uh, we don't always know what is uh, the next uh, step that God has in mind for us. But nonetheless, with great courage, we pray together for direction and discernment. And so we hear in some ways how in this early um, experience of the church, in the absence of the physical presence of Jesus, the, the human presence of Jesus, uh, begins to understand herself in a way that allows for the spread of the gospel. So we hear, and I think uh, it's interesting that uh, Luke, who uh, is the author of the gospel of Luke and Acts, uh, names everyone for us, right? It might be a reminder that they are no different than us, that, uh, that the names that we hear and whose names we know are no different than us being called by name, uh, to do what God has asked us to do in our baptismal promises, which is what they were asked to do, is to, uh, to uh, communicate to the world uh, the love of God in our midst. We hear in the gospel how Jesus tells us that uh, because we have believed what God told us, in that is our salvation. And then we are encouraged with some, uh, with some, some sense of, um, of being zealous to proclaim that word of God, not so much by what we say, but how we behave. And so we hear in this Acts of the Apostles how the church gathered together might reflect some elements of the church. There's the core kind of apostles and Mary who are there. There are the women who were the first witnesses to the resurrection. Certainly the apostles were not, right? Uh, and there is the, uh, the, the people who are gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. And so we hear how God uh, moves in the lives of those who had spent much of their uh, three years with him, how he moves in, in ways to, uh, to encourage them uh, to go out from this room and to preach uh, who he is in the world, right? Who he is in, in its manifestation of God's love for us. 
The second reading is, comes to us from, uh, from the pastoral letter of Peter. It is at a time when the church is under persecution. Uh, and he's reminding uh, the people uh, who he's writing to, and you and I, that not everyone accepts uh, the values that we live by. And sometimes it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of, uh, uh, it takes a lot of uh, courage to proclaim that we are followers of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Um, on Sundays, our teachers and our students gather together so that they might learn what we are asked to do in our, uh, in our baptismal promises, uh, that we are asked to communicate to these children uh, that they are to love God and their neighbor. So in the essence, it is this love that we are asked to communicate. And so Peter says that don't worry uh, if you're, uh, if you're uh, persecuted in the name of Jesus. Don't worry about that. I think sometimes that's easier said than done, right? I think that's easier said than done. Sometimes in moments in our life, when you and I are called maybe to offer a counter perspective on a particular thing that is rooted in a value that we have grown up with, it might feel a little awkward, it might feel a little uncomfortable, but nonetheless we are called to speak the truth that we have learned from the scriptures and from our participation with each other in community and by the experience of love in our own lives. It isn't always easy, I know that, it isn't always easy. One of the things for you and I that we can see in this small gathering in the upper room when they went back to Jerusalem is how God uses sometimes uh, the smallest of uh, events to uh, move forward his word, right? We know that, that, uh, that uh, by uh, 12 people, uh, the women at the foot of the cross, uh, Jesus' followers in his lifetime were not that many, but all of a sudden at Pentecost, 5,000 men and women heard uh, this message of God's love in their own language. And from that went forth uh, the message of God so that today you and I have inherited uh, that same faith that was proclaimed uh, 2,000 years ago on Pentecost. What an astounding event that is. I think about that in the National Catholic Church. As small as we are, right, as small as we are, we are really mighty in our witness to God's uh, incarnational love in the world. This parish alone uh, does a tremendous amount in the world that has a ripple effect. All of our parishes throughout the United States do the same in their own way because I think we take seriously this notion that uh, even if there's one or two or three of us gathered in God's name, God is present to us in our midst. The gospel, I think, is uh, remarkable. I think it's one of the most intimate uh, images that we have of Jesus. In this uh, day and age where there's a lot of technology, you and I, uh, I think, uh, sometimes inappropriately get to hear conversations that maybe we shouldn't hear, right? We get to hear taped conversations that are sometimes, um, in some ways, um, make us wonder about uh, certain people who we had uh, honored in the past, but now hearing them in their private thoughts, we wonder about that sometimes. Uh, and in this, in this uh, particular prayer of Jesus, it's called the High Priestly Prayer of Jesus. It comes uh, at the end of the farewell discourse when Jesus is sharing his final meal in the company of those who loved him and who he loved. And so he, he, we see this intimate glimpse of Jesus uh, talking to his father. Uh, we hear this beautiful, intimate prayer in which Jesus uh, prays for his disciples, but he also prays for us. And he prays in such a way that we might be uh, always reminded that God always holds us in the palm of his hand, that we are never very far from God. Even in moments when we feel lost, even in moments when we might despair, even in moments when we doubt uh, that all of, the, all of the, uh, the aspects of our life and our faith were for naught, it is this prayer that might remind us that God holds us and that what is his, he has never lost. It is a beautiful, it is a beautiful picture of the intimacy of Jesus with his Father. It is the whole theme of the Gospel of John, that Jesus and the Father are one, ut unum sint, that they, that not that they might be one father as you are one, as I and you and you and me, that they may be one in us. It is this deep abiding prayer for us to remember that God never lets go of us. God never, never is very far away from us. I know it's hard sometimes. I know it's hard in our life 
when we encounter disappointments or we encounter maybe that everybody who we've met has clay feet and they aren't who they say they are. And in so many ways, this prayer might be a reminder for you and I that Jesus prays for us. We have a God who prays for us. Father, not only do I pray for them, but for those who will believe uh, because of them. That's, uh, that's an admonition to you and I. Because we are in this post-ascension period, this liminal period between Ascension and Pentecost, this time of the already but not yet, you and I are invited to take up the task that Jesus left us, which is to continue to proclaim the truth of, uh, of what we hear in the, in the scriptures, the truth that our salvation resides in our belief in God and in God's love for us. And because that we are called into community and that love must extend to each and every one of, of the persons that we meet. We are to be a mirror of Christ. When I was preparing to come here today, I was uh, doing some reading on the commentaries, and I was reading some of the, uh, the thoughts of some of the uh, greater minds than mine, certainly. But uh, there's a, 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 a saint, a mystic, uh, St. Charles de Foucault. He, uh, he lived uh, and worked uh, in the desert. He was the only member of his community because his life uh, was so rigorous uh, and so, uh, uh, so dedicated to God. But he said a wonderful thing that he said, uh, I should behave in such a way that when people see me, they would say, look how this person behaves. I wonder how his master has taught him to do that, right? All of us, all of our behavior should lead us uh, to point to Christ. Everything that you and I do should lead us to point to the love of Christ so that when people see us, they might be attracted to us uh, by how we behave, not so much by, by what we say in many ways. This beautiful prayer of Jesus reminds us uh, in so many ways that God's love for us is so tender and intimate that uh, he prayed for us right after this, Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he's handed over to be crucified. Uh, and his prayer changes in the Garden of Gethsemane. We know that, right? His prayer to the Father, if this cup can pass, please let it pass, right? But not my will, your will be done. And I think these, uh, these, these images that we get of the intimacy and the love of Jesus might stir our hearts, uh, might move us in important ways uh, to take up the, the, the tasks of, of our life, the task of our baptismal vows, uh, to live in such a way that when people see us, uh, they might be attracted to what it is that we have. The very first thing that ever defined us as Christians was at Antioch. Uh, when the pagans looked at us and said, look at those Christians, see how they love each other. In this world today, you and I, I think, are called to a really important mission about being love in the world, about communicating that in ways that lead to peacefulness and unity rather than division. One of the commentators on the, script, on the scripture passage today uh, uh, was uh, pretty insistent in their remarks about how we understand the people in the upper room praying together it was their unity together in prayer. It was their unity together in the experience of the God who loved them through Christ. And perhaps that's also for us. Our unity in prayer might sustain us and strengthen us so that when we go out individually or two by two, you and I might take up this priestly prayer of Christ uh, in which he asks that the, we are reminded that what God has given uh, to Jesus is his and he belongs to the Father, and, and what has always belonged to him uh, will always belong to him, and that's you and I. Uh, in the Gospel of John, there's always this kind of duality between light and darkness. And so when Jesus says, uh, I don't pray for the world, I pray for them who have come to believe in me through my words, Jesus isn't condemning the world. What he's noting is, is that the world, as you and I encounter it, doesn't always accept this message of radical inclusion and love. This world would rather divide us. This world would rather put people on the margins. This world would rather have us against them. Uh, and instead, this priestly prayer, this high priestly prayer of Christ might invite us to lay aside all of those differences, uh, to act in such a way that uh, even when we disagree with someone, uh, we might still be able to love them. Uh, even when we disagree with someone, we might still be able to be civil with them. Even perhaps when they are so ra we are so radically opposed to each other, we might indeed find in this high priestly prayer of Christ that they too belong to God as we do. And so today as we hear this, uh, this final uh, uh, set of readings for the Easter season, 
we write, remember uh, the, uh, the, the gift of the resurrection continues to uh, represent, to unfold in our lives in mysterious and splendid ways. We might remember, it, and I have to all of the time, that uh, when I am irritable or discomforted or dispirited, that I am still called to great acts of love. It isn't easy. I know it isn't easy. Um, even coming here today was a bit more of a task than it generally would be, right? And I can't tell you, I, well, yeah, I, would, I would not be telling you the truth if I said I was the most patient person, right? And so so uh, I came up the street the wrong way. Um, and then I told on myself to the police officer, right? He's like, don't worry about it, right? So uh, in, in, some ways, in, some ways, in some ways, there's an invitation uh, for us uh, to take these little, these little moments, right? Just these little moments uh, uh, to ask how we, might, how we might be more loving in the world, how we might pay attention to this earnest prayer that Jesus prayed for us, for me and you. And, uh, and he prayed for us in some ways the way that he knew the names of those who he lived with and who followed him. He prayed for Patricia and Gary and Bill and Karen and Teresa and Karen. He prayed for you, for you by name. He prayed that we might always be faithful uh, to this tremendous message of love. And so uh, some days we fall short of that, but our hope is, is that God's mercies are brand new every morning. So let us continue that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal God, the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, one being the Father. Through God all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and punished his fire. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and fulfilled to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's people called into existence by God's love, we now offer our prayers and petitions. Our refrain for today will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our world in its brokenness, that the peace of the risen Christ heal the wounds of all victims of violence, injustice, and exploitation, and transform the hearts of those who lead the nations and who make public policy, that they may truly become makers of peace and protector of the environment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our fellow Americans may be drawn together in truth by the Spirit, that they may rejoice in their different gifts and points of view, and that they may use those diverse talents in unity with each other to form constructive answers to the many common issues that we all face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the American National Catholic Church, other religious communities around the world, and for all the people of God, that they may be made whole and free by the Spirit and bear witness to every aspect of life in full force of Christ's resurrection. This month, we especially pray for our ANCC presiding bishop, Bishop George, and all, the, all, all of our ANCC clergy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people in our communities, that just as Jesus encouraged the little children to come to him, May we also welcome, encourage, and protect the little ones in our care by being good examples and showing them how to live in ways of love and service to our God. We especially pray for Eva, Evie, Fiona, and Sabine, who will be receiving the Sacrament of First Eucharist this June. 
May God bless them and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Just as the body is one, and many members, with many members, and all the members, though many, are one body, may we come together in peace and love with our many neighbors as one with each other in the Spirit of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Though we speak many languages and view our world through the eyes of many cultures, may we each hear the pure message of God's bountiful love and forgiveness spoken to us in a way that we may understand it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for the sick, those suffering from addiction and depression, those in hospitals, nursing homes, and rehabilitation and hospice, that they may receive the spiritual and emotional support they need and for the strength and patience of their caregivers. And are there any sick that we should especially remember? Linda, Sister, Sister Maria, Sister Maria, Maria Sister Betty, Jenny, Dennis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that God, who gives the promise of eternal life, will grant them fullness of salvation and provide comfort to their families. And are there any whom we should especially remember? We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as always, we pray for those who have no one to pray for them. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which you have spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn today will be Rain Down, which is number 771. Number 771 in the morning.
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's church. Lord, accept the prayers of your faithful people together with the gifts we offer, that through these holy rites performed with reverent hearts, we may rise to the glory of heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation that we should always sing your glory, Lord. But we praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. By offering his body on the cross, he brought to completion the sacrifice of old. By commending himself into your hands for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, the universe resounds with Easter joy, and the choirs of angels sing the endless hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Would the children like to join me at the altar? Come on, Sinova. Come on, Sebastian. Eli, you want to come? No? Come on. You are truly blessed, O God of holiness. You accompany us with love as we journey through life. Blessed, too, is your Son, Jesus Christ, who is present among us and whose love gathers us together. As once he did for his disciples, Christ now opens the scriptures for us and breaks the bread. Great and merciful Father, we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit to hallow these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the eve of his passion and death, while at table with those he loved, he took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, and handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
And so, Father most holy, we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son, whom you led through suffering and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and a place at your right hand. Until Jesus, our Savior, comes again, we proclaim the work of your love, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of eternal blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ entrusted to us. Through the power of your spirit of love, include us now and forever <clears throat> among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we share. Lord, perfect your church in faith and love, together with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, George, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those your son has gained for you. Open our eyes to the needs of all. Inspire us with words and deeds to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Keep our service of others faithful to the example and command of Christ. Let your church be a living witness to truth and freedom, to justice and peace, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of a world made new. Be mindful of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. With these and all the dead whose faith only you can know, lead them to the fullness of the resurrection and gladden them with the light of your face. When our pilgrimage on earth is complete, welcome us into your heavenly home, where we shall dwell with you forever. There with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and the martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. i 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. My sisters and brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love and how happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Today will be crown him with many crowns, which is number 362 in the glory and praise. Number 362.
Listen to our prayers, God our Savior, and through this most holy sacrament confirm our hope that you will glorify the whole body of the church as you have glorified its head, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So um, I want to thank Beth and John for leading us uh, in our beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you. homily and delivering the homily, I realized that in seminary they don't teach us anything about business, and they certainly don't teach us about anything about marketing. So we seem to fail in that particular category. So Father Gidi has made some posters for our concert, Harmony for a Cause, next week. So if you can take that and place that somewhere, uh, even if you put it in your front window, <laughs> uh, maybe that will encourage people to come, if you would. Uh, if you would do that, that would be great. But let me, ask, let me ask the children, how does it feel when you come up around the altar? Yeah, Sebastian, what does that mean? Good? How about you, Sinovia? Feels good? Did you, did you like helping? Did you like helping up there? Yeah? Uh, not so sure? Maybe not. How, how, how about you, Sinovia? It feels good up there? One of the reasons I invite the children often to come around the altar is because um, there's no reason that uh, the children should find what we do here uh, anything other than very loving uh, and very inviting. And so while it is mysterious and transcendent, it is still the bread and wine that nourishes us and feeds us, right? So I like the children to be really an intimate part of that. Perhaps we didn't have that chance growing up, right? Certainly I did not. Um, but I think, uh, I hope the children uh, somehow see how close God is to them, uh, both in his eminency Im and transcendency. Um, the other thing is I would encourage you, I know that we are uh, not necessarily a geographic parish, but Father Didi has uh, been trying to uh, have a choir, and people don't necessarily show up for him. The people who are here are singing to the choir. <laughs> right? uh, so, the, so don't pay attention to that. Uh, but if you could, um, if you could uh, participate with the gifts that you have, uh, that would uh, certainly uh, go a, a long way to help uh, GD not be so demoralized, right? And, uh, uh, and then that would also get me off his back as well, right? So, uh, so um, if, uh, if you take a moment, uh, please don't ask her anything about uh, my life before being a priest, but my niece Kathleen, would you just say hello to everybody? She's in the back there. So uh, uh, you can ask her what you want, right? So, uh, 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 so thank you, and thank you again, Beth and John, for, uh, for leading us this song. Don't forget our concert. Um, uh, on Saturday? Friday. Uh, Friday. Friday. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You are um, bad at marketing. Yes, we are bad at marketing. We're very bad at marketing. So anybody can help with that, we'd be great. I want to thank you for your generous donations, both to Pierre Toussaint and to the immigrants in New York. I know that your uh, response is always so generous, so thank you, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I, I can't tell you how much uh, uh, people appreciate that. Father Seamus and Father Octavio are working with uh, groups of new immigrants. Saint, uh, Pierre Toussaint is working with those uh, who uh, certainly are food insecure, uh, not for any other reason other than our economy. So thank you so much for helping them. It really is such a generous donation. Um, next Sunday, wear red. It's Pentecost, so wear something red and festive, right? And uh, we'll celebrate the great feast of Pentecost. And then I believe the Sunday after that, our children will receive their first Holy Communion. So join us for that. The one after that, sorry. <laughs> Again, not marketing, right? Uh, if the weather is nice, uh, the new communicants lead us in a procession with bubbles uh, to uh, benediction in the garden. So it would be nice if you could join us and support that. So thank you so much. So our closing hymn is going So the Lord be with you. <laughs> not out for God's blessing. May the God who has redeemed you and made you adopted children through the resurrection of his only son bless you and fill you with joy. Amen. Amen. May the God who has bestowed on you the gifts of redemption and lasting freedom make you heirs of eternal life. 
Amen. May the God who joined you to Christ's resurrection by faith and baptism lead you to live justly and so bring you to your home in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass ascended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Um, our closing hymn is going to be Take the Word of God with You, which is number 543. And I also would like to especially thank the choir today. I had a mean tickle in my throat for the whole crowd here with many crowns. So thank goodness there were strong voices singing along. So number 543, take the word of God with you. 543. Oh,